Okay, so what I've done is I've made a new context based on the Biox 3006 uh, Xanthine Oxidase practical. Um, and this crack um, obviously is the one where we're going to incubate xanthine or hypoxanthine with this enzyme in the phosphate buffer. And we're going to follow the absorbance at 293, which is the nice peak that uric acid has. Uh, xanthine doesn't absorb so much here. Uh, it does absorb a little bit. Uh, I looked up hypoxanthine and it doesn't absorb at all at this wavelength. Uh, so that makes life a bit easier there. Okay, so let's uh, open it up and uh, you can have a choice of bench colours. So I know that all the benches at Queensland are gold plated. Um, but uh, let's let's go with this, this colour here. And let's generate the tubes. So you can generate the tubes one at a time. So uh, you'll notice I've made a tube of uric acid here, which is quite a useful little standard to have. It does open some other doors for doing things like the absorption spectrum of the different compounds as well. Um, so we could generate the tubes one by one, but let's just click full set and get a nice set of tubes. So we've got the phosphate buffer, 50 millimolar, some water in these big tubes. And then in these little tubes here, I've got the xanthine, the hypoxanthine, the xanthine oxidase. And I've got the uric acid, which I've actually given a little bit of a color to. I know that it doesn't have a color, but I just, just for the sake of being able to track things uh, and visually see the output, it's quite handy. Uh, so I can take that off before we release it, obviously. So we're just going on measured absorbances. And to measure those absorbances, we've got the plate reader up here, which is currently set to the incorrect wavelength of 313. Um, but that's easily fixed. Let's make it 293 before we do anything else. Uh, but a nice trap for students if they're not paying attention. Now, in the, uh, the actual practical, uh, the very first thing we're doing is looking at the effect of enzyme concentration on the rate of the reaction. And you set this up with one and a half mils, and there's a total of about 1.8 mils. Um, because I'm going to do this in a well, I'm just going to cut the concentrations by uh, a tenth. So we'll do 150 microliters, 30 microliters, and so on. So the first thing I'll do is make um, a... A, uh, a, a plate with six columns and one row. Now I could do this in duplicate and all sorts, but uh, let's put in the 150 microliters of xanthine, which is our substrate. Now the xanthine is already in buffer, which is an interesting thing because it means that in fact not adding the buffer is not the end of the world. Um, I've actually programmed it so that it, the algorithms so that they do check that there's buffer there. But um, even if the students were to make a mistake on this buffer, I think it would be unlikely that it would have much of an effect. But the buffer goes down from 30 microliters, which gets put in the very first tube. This is the one that's not going to have any enzyme in. And then we put 25 microliters in the next well, and then 20 microliters. And at this stage, you'll probably be thinking of using a P20 rather than a P200. But, you know, like all good students, I'm going to be a little bit lazy. And I know it's not really going to make much difference. So let's, let's just do that. Um, and let's do five. It rather goes against the grain, doesn't it, to use a... P200 to you to do five microliters, but there we go. So we're all set up now with our substrate, and now we're going to add um, zero to 30 microliters of enzyme. So here's our enzyme. Um, let's get this pipette out here, and whoops, we're going to do five microliters in the first one, but let's get the timer out. 
Um, and so we're ready to, to roll with that one. So five light microliters goes in there. Uh, started the timer. Let's put 10 microliters into this one. Let's put 15 microliters into this one. Let's put 20 microliters into this one. And let's put 25. So I'll put 20 and then 5. Again, probably wouldn't do it that way in real life, but probably get the P200 out. But we've got 0, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. Let's mix them. And let's have a look at the absorbances. Let's see if anything's happening. Well, um, what we can see is that not a lot is happening. Um, everything seems to be... Oh no, it is. Look at 0 0.63, 0 0.95, 107, 122. So actually, let's do this again. Let's. Uh, I'll bring in the. I'll make an Excel spreadsheet, uh, and we can we can continually monitor this. So if I go to absorbance, uh, copy all of this, and then bring the Excel in and paste it. So after 1.2 minutes, we've got these values, um, and let's then. Just crank the speed of time up a little bit so that we can just not have to hang around for our next reading for too long. Uh, and then when we get to two minutes, which is this, let's copy these again and pop them into our spreadsheet. And I'm just going to delete this here so I can compare them with the previous ones. So we're getting some increase in absorbance in, in each of these with time, which is quite quite pleasant. Um, let's crank up the, the speed even more and see what happens if we take a sample around about now. Um, yeah, we're really getting some decent absorbances happening, which if I put into the spreadsheet and what I should have done, of course, was said that this is 5.7 minutes. I can't remember which one. Well, this one was. I think it was about three, wasn't it? And this was about um, 0.5 minutes. Um, but we can see the absorbance going up in each of the tubes and higher when there's more enzyme. So I reckon if we started plotting these out, we would, so we've been going 18 minutes now, let's take an absorbance at, at that. Um, and actually it's probably maxed out. I reckon that what's happened here is you can see these absorbances getting up to a maximum and that's because the substrate is running out. So lots for the students to think about here, um, lots for them to play with. Uh, activity of the enzyme, which of course I've made arbitrary at this stage, but could be um, could be anything, uh, and different concentrations of the xanthine can be used. And in fact, doing the different concentrations of the xanthine is, of course, the the next experiment. So, obviously, I would set that up the same way: thirty microliters, one hundred and fifty microliters, ten microliters, and and I know that if I do that, I'll get uh, a, a faster rate in these ones here and they, they won't run out so quickly either. So everything um, looks really nice and very, very quick. As you can see, um, the whole of that practical could just take 10 minutes um, for all three experiments, really, because with the speed dilator and look, we'd be going for 44 minutes in, <laughs> in pretend time. Uh, so a lot of things that we can do there. In fact, if I, if I, in fact, just to, to prove that, let's let's take it the speed back down to one, and let's stop this and reset it, and let's actually do this this experiment with the the substrate different substrate concentration. So I'm going to do thirty up to one hundred and eighty of xanthine, opposite of buffer, and ten of enzyme. Let's see how well I do in that. So I'll make a new plate um, and 
In fact, actually, I want a different flag, don't I? I want seven columns because I want uh, the first one to be zero. So I'm going to go 0, 30, 60, 90, 120, 150, 180 of the, the Zan theme. Um, I hope I've got enough in there, actually. Um, in fact, just to make sure I have enough, let's make uh, a thousand microliters of xanthine and we'll actually then just have this, this xanthine tube here that we'll do everything from, just in case we didn't have enough in there. So let's, uh, let's make 30 microliters of of the xanthine and put it into here and then 60 microliters and then 90 microliters and of course all of these things are easier if you're not talking at the same time the real trick for uh, students of course is well for all of us is to is to not be distracted while we're we're doing our pipetting uh, so let's go to 180 microliters. So we've got 0 to 180 microliters of the xanthine, and we're told to top that up with some, some of the, uh, the phosphate. So we've got 180 in the first one, 150 in the second one, 120 in the third one, 90 in this one, 60 in this one, and 30 in the penultimate one. Of course, the very last one has already got 180 in it. So to start the reactions, we're going to add 10 microliters of the enzyme. And let's start that one off, start the stopwatch, 10 microliters, 10 microliters, now it should be mixing shouldn't I, a um, bit naughty of me not to mix but I will mix before we do anything serious, I don't know whether I've managed to put this enzyme in all of these but we'll soon find out, let's mix them, so that's good, we've got the, this set to the right thing, let's take an absorbance reading, and see what we see what we have. Uh, let's just move that away from there. Absorbance. Um, not a lot happening, you wouldn't say. Uh, let's copy that and put it into our Excel spreadsheet. We'll pop it over over here. This was done at 0.6 minutes. And of course, these were the 180 um uh no they were the zero uh 30 60 90 120 150 and 180 of substrate so um while we've been making that another um, minute has gone by so let's take another re absorbance reading and see if things have advanced a little I think they have so we'll copy those and paste them into here and I'll just grab this line and move it up to there because this is the 1.5 minute sample so this is our time here and let's uh, let's get some sensibility into these numbers by making them a nice number of significant figures. Uh, looks like things are going up, doesn't it? Uh, let's take another reading now at two minutes. Oh, I'll crank up the time a little bit here, just to say maybe take a three minute value. So let's uh, take an absorbance round about now. 
that wasn't a bad guess. Copy that information there. And then if we paste it in and bring that three minute stuff up to here, then let's just see what this is looking like. So the, the zero one is staying just at baseline. The 30 microliters of substrate one is going up about 0 0.03 every one and a half minutes. This one's going up maybe a little bit more. There was a bit of a stutter at the start because of course we've got a bit of baseline uh, happening here as well, of course. But you can see that the longer that we go on and the more samples we look at, the more a convincing pattern of a relationship between substrate concentration here and the absorbance that you're getting at any particular time and therefore the rate at which these reactions are going is, is, is going okay. So um, Clint, you know, that, that was very quick. That's really taken, I mean, even in this accelerated time, six minutes, it wasn't that for me to do it. It was about three minutes for me to do that entire experiment. But of course, there's so many things that we could vary here. We couldn't have double substrates. We can have um, different amounts of enzyme. We can do all sorts of really interesting things just to play around. But as course coordinator, we can throw in some brilliant curveballs. You know, we can have the enzyme not working very well. We can have a different specific activity. Uh, we can we can mismake the phosphate buffer. There's so many things that we can do to to tease students and and get them thinking about the data that they're getting. Really nice and authentic. There's you know there's nice wobble. There's randomness. But they are authentic when it comes to being reflective of what the students chose to do. So, you know, everything's fine. The, and the real icing on the cake is that every single run has this unique number. Uh, and that number means that it's, you know, it's preval pre prevalent through everything. It's on the bench. It's, it's on any absorbance readings that, that you take. Uh, and so it uniquely identifies a run and therefore you'll know exactly what each student has done. It starts to open up all sorts of plagiarism res resistant assessments. Uh, so um, obviously I could do this with some inhibitors, put some inhibitors in there. The equations that, uh, that basically determine the, the rate of, of everything are uh, taking into account whatever KM we set whatever KIs we set for the different compounds. So uh, everything is, you know, totally controllable by the course coordinator. And it's really just up to our imagination to think of what uh, interesting and hopefully wicked things we can get the, uh, the students to work through.